All right, guys. Today, we're on the Gulf of Mexico, trolling for some Spanish mackerel. Now, I do have some of the uh, Angling AI 4-inch open pours trolling behind the boat. So far, we've gotten a couple of these on the spoon, but uh, hopefully we'll catch some more on some other baits. So, just some little bonus fishing footage here. So yeah, we're gonna see if we can get some more, and uh, hopefully we'll get some on some stuff that we made. Left the wives on the beach, so hope they're uh, doing okay. And we're gonna see if we can catch some more of these old, these elusive, these, these these Spaniard mackerel. So yeah, no, this this is nice. This, this is not my usual domain, so it's it's very nice. And uh, everyone else in Florida is also here. <laughs> so there you go. Well, happy Jack. We we got a little one on. Let's see what we got. It's a fish. It's a fish. Yeah, dude, he hit. I mean, he hit hard like they always do. He's only got to be 12 inches, so. Uh, <laughs> Those Spanish mackerel, they're real fast. So whenever they hit, what do you have? Okay, yeah. Okay. He's hung another line? Get him, son. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, we got hung up another line, but. Dude, this is like the first fish we've caught in like an hour. Yeah, the fishing's real slow. All we can get them to hit is a spoon, which, surprise, surprise. If they were classy, they'd bite my swim baits. Welcome back to the uh, world's worst fishing, everybody. I'm Chris Jones, and I um, hope you enjoyed my little salt life uh, ex exhibition there. Um, I don't do it very often. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of cool to catch, to catch some different things. So uh, we threw a couple different baits at them, but the only thing they wanted was uh, a silver or gold spoon, which is pretty normal for Spanish mackerel. And then, uh, and then we did have one bluefish as well. Um, so anyway, today <clears throat> um, I've had a lot of people ask me sort of for a shop tour, um, which there's really no tour. It's just this one wall and some shelving units um, and, and, and a bunch of shelves and stuff. But I'll show you what I can. Um, but I figured this would be uh, I've had a lot of people ask me to look at my mold collection So I figured hey, I'll yank out all the molds set them on the table We'll just look at everything talk about molds in general um, and then we'll definitely uh, Make some stuff at some point. Uh, I've been pouring a lot of baits this morning So I'm, I'm gonna show you what I've already done today um, And then and then we'll kind of start the video so to speak so uh, anyway, let me show you some cool stuff that I've been uh, working on this morning. Okay, so these are actually a solid color. If I can uh, get it out here. Well, why is it going that way? Yeah. So that's just a solid color. And it's the uh, Nordic Color Shift base with lots of hologram flake, some laser glitter in it. Um, and then some black flake and uh, so one thing that's difficult in an open pour setting is flake suspension Especially you see some of these larger black flakes A lot of times if you pour um, Pour pour the plastic into the mold all the flake wants to sink to the bottom especially in a large thick bait like this so I basically utilize another excuse me another technique to pour um, these solid colors like this with flake suspension um, so we'll definitely be doing some videos on that but uh, yeah just just a real just kind of bright flashy got a little bit of everything in it shad color so here's everything so uh, those are the baits that we just uh, looked at the uh, candy shad whatever whatever I would even call this so yeah super cool especially in person just the effect and then we have probably my best selling color, the green color shift shad. Yep, with the uh, hand poured dot, of course. Yeah, that's just so good. So yeah, there's that one there. These were poured maybe an hour apart. So yeah, awesome stuff there. Super cool colors. So. Um, I'm actually filming this the Sunday before Memorial Day. So happy Memorial Day weekend, even though it's not really a happy thing to think about. 
but uh, I hope everyone is enjoying their freedoms. Um, yeah, um, so you'll probably see these posted for sale on my Instagram, probably before I even post this video. Oh, one more thing. I wanted to show you guys some rainbow trout hand pours that I did the other day. So these um, were actually very difficult um, just to get the colors right, and they kind of look like watermelons, but you can see there's a gold skin in the head, and then this red-orange uh, skin pour down the center, and then that's uh, dead on snow shine white for the uh, belly, and then a lot of things went into the green. But, but you'll notice these dots, that's actually Lure Works dotting paint, just hand dotted on each one, so. Yep, some really cool trout, and um, yeah, super happy with the way that those came out. Okay, so here is the current collection um, of what I would consider like working molds. So, and this is just aluminum, not, not all the silicone stuff. Um, but these are molds that I regularly use. So, uh, yeah, quite a, quite a lot of aluminum. But you know, this is still considered a small mold collection by a lot of people's standards. There are several bait companies that have been doing this, you know, a lot longer than I have that uh, have way, way, I mean, many times this. Uh, Terry Scroggins, you know, one of, my, one of my friends now, Terry Scroggins, has more molds than I've ever seen, you know. This is just one shelf out of many shelves for him. So, you know, I'm, I'm proud of my mold collection. It's um, served me very well. I can make uh, a lot of great things, I think, with these good molds. But, um, you know, it's still a humble collection, but I'm adding to it as I can. And, uh, yeah, so let's, let's kind of take a look at it. Um, we'll start, you know what, we'll just go left to right. So, uh, I'm having to hold the camera way back to kind of pan everything in. So, we'll have to kind of look at it in sections, um, realistically. So, here we go. Okay, so top left, you can see these gigantic molds here. So, this is a custom mold. And you've probably seen this one a few times. It's a five inch swim bait. And uh, I really like, I really like that the hook slots eh, are bolted in. You just peel the bait right out. Um, so those, those are never gonna fall out. They're never gonna be in the wrong place. Um, it has my company's initials in the tail, L-I-T-L for land is the limit. Um, yeah, so this was a design that I designed with uh, my brother-in-law, who also uh, drew my logo. And uh, yeah, super, super great bait. I call it the Boom Shad. Um, I don't sell a lot of them anymore. I don't make a lot of them anymore. I need to, however, I should. Then here are my regular stick worm molds, okay? It's the Bass Tackle 5 inch BT stick, I believe is what it's called. All right. Yep. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I sent these to Bob's Tackle Shack, actually, and he was nice enough to put my initials in there again. You'll see a little L-I-T-L. So I originally bought these from Bass Tackle, but he was able to, um, to uh, make that modification for me. Um, really great mold. I would say the only downside to it is um, it's, it's almost like the cavities are too high up in, in some cases. And what I mean is that there's not a lot of room here for the plastic to drink. So if you don't fill that sprue up twice, I feel like you get a little pocket in the first cavity there. Um, so you, you have to, in my experience, I have to top that one, I have to top off the sprue hole two times in order to really make sure that I get all of my runs there. <clears throat> um, other than that, I absolutely love the bait that comes out of that. Uh, sticking with the stickworm theme over here is the goat of all stickworm molds. So this is the original core shot stickworm mold uh, that, that Josh made at Angling AI. Let me uh, see if I can get it open here, geez. Yeah. So you've maybe have seen this one on my channel before. Um, super cool. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's simplistically genius, the whole rod idea. And um, anything else you see is quite literally a knockoff. He was the first one to do it, and a lot of, a lot of people have knocked off his idea. Um, but this is the original, it's the OG, and uh, it's king of the castle, as far as I'm concerned. This is um, the, 
what I would consider the goat of uh, injection swim bait molds. You guessed it, it's the Bloodline swim bait mold. This is the four inch version. So I've got eight cavities of this. Okay, so yeah, that's, I didn't count cavities. So let's back up a second. Eight cavities of my custom shad. I have 16 of the BT stick. I only have one of the core shot molds, but I have two of these four cavity, four inch Bloodline molds. Golly, let me get it separated here, jeez. You would think there was still a bait in there. All right. Now let me uh, put these back. So, well, actually, yeah, and this is why you can see a, a whole cavity. So, yeah, we've all seen the bloodline. Uh, we, we all love the way that this bait looks. You know, just the way that it incorporates the soft plastic eyes. It's, uh, there's really nothing quite like it. And the four inch is absolutely sexy. It's my favorite one out of all the bloodline swim baits. So two of those for four cavities there. And uh, again, you can see that it's top port single injection so that you can get the top to bottom laminate. Very, very important uh, when, when uh, I think, considering what mold you're gonna buy is can you do with it all the things that you wanna do? Uh, let's see, here's another AI mold. You can always tell it's an AI mold by these little uh, um, sort of brass looking uh, screws here. This is the Atomic Toad. This is his frog mold. We actually did a, um, so we actually did a name uh, contest on this channel, and uh, Atomic Toad was the name that was chosen. Great frog mold. I absolutely love frog fishing. It's got a notch on the top for your hook to bury into, as well as a hook slot for easy rigging. And here's one great thing about this mold. He made a tail mold for it so that you can easily make split tail frogs. So you can make, for example, a June, bug, a June bug frog with chartreuse legs, and they fit perfectly in. They bond well every single time. Um, it's just a much better way of doing the split color than you would have to do with a mold that does not have the uh, tail mold. Okay, so way, way, way in the back, we have a really neat contraption. This is one that uh, Josh did with Terry Scroggins. This is the kicker tail worm, okay? And uh, super, super awesome. If you don't have this mold or don't make baits yourself, but you want to try this bait, uh, it is available under a company called Stanford Baits. Um, so if you just look, uh, look for Stanford Baits or Terry Scroggins Baits, um, you'll be able to buy this, I think, in three sizes. And uh, I've seen the factory where these are made, and uh, they are a super cool worm. Let's see. Which one is this? I should know, right? What do we have here? I honestly cannot think of what this one is. Ah, this is the mid mag, okay? So this is the big fat um, finesse worm. So I've done a few videos on that. Just, just like the um, kicker tail, it's an excellent mold to, to inject. So if you're a beginner, um, molds like these are, are a good way to learn because you're gonna have less boo-boos, I think. Um, those are absolutely wonderful. Um, so again, over here, I have three of these. So nine cavities of the Angling AI four inch stinger. I have some ecto crawls on the way and a couple other fun things. But uh, yeah, these stingers are, I think the ultimate beaver style bait. Um, just the, the way that the way that the appendages you can pull them apart or leave them together if you're going to flip heavy dense cover But let's say you're bed fishing or you want to um, To have something with lots of appendages to, to entice that fish this one does both you can leave it solid or you can pull all the appendages and legs apart and uh, And it just becomes a whole nother bait excellent mold shoots incredibly well So I'm very lucky to have nine cavities of that. Let's look over here. So I originally had a jerkbait mold from Delmart. I still have them, but I don't really use them much. Ugh, come on. I really cranked down on that one. And, uh, and you've seen these a lot on the channel. So it's just five inch fork tail jerkbait. So, yep. Word to the wise, if you have a mold like this and you sell it, don't sell it under the name Fluke. That is trademarked. Sell it under some other name. Well, here's a good one. All right, so this is one that um, that AI also did with Scroggins. We helped launch this mold when we went uh, to do a collaboration. This is the Punch Bug. This is absolutely the coolest little flipping bait 
it's 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 a little cricket sized uh, mold excellent excellent um, mold to to inject um, don't have any problems every once in a while I get some flashing if I really push on it uh, because there's so much venting going on I think but better to have it vent properly and not get dense um, better better to have a little bit of flashing than, than denting is uh, how I look at that so two of those for 16 cavities and that's it's such a fun mold to, to use because you get so much um, return on your investment you know it, just like that you've got 40 50 60 baits okay and back here in the back we have six cavities two molds of the five inch version of the uh, bloodline swim bait so we'll take a look at this one real quick and then the actual matching mold that makes the little uh, line inserts which we also have for the four inch because they are different sizes so there it is right there the, uh, the the rolling action on this bait is absolutely awesome so it's it's less of a head wobble but but more of a more of a roll as as it's kicking so um, for example the hand pour swim baits that that we've developed um, have a much different action than this so two two different two different actions on two different baits and both are absolutely money right here I have 20 cavities of a six and a half inch finesse worm and again Bob's tackle shack was nice enough to initial them for me okay so a lot of you might know these as a trick worm style again don't call it a trick worm um, but really they're actually finesse worms in a way so yep the same way you don't call your uh, stick worm a Cinco call it a stick worm so things to be things to be mindful of so have some uh, finesse worms there and uh, I haven't actually done a video with this one yet I need to however this is angling AI's tube mold and uh, they are pretty much considered to be the the, the best tube mold and one, one cool feature is that the rods here have two different notches. And that's so you can set them to two different, um, two different depths there. So you can see that. Sorry. Well, I want to go in there. Yeah. You can set it there. Or you can set it there. So you'll see that there's one option leaves a thicker head. Okay. One leaves a thinner head. So depending on how thick you want that head... You, you have a couple options there as far as uh, how to set your rods. So excellent, excellent idea there. And uh, again, he was the first one to do that. Um, so, yep, I need, to, uh, I need to film with this thing because I've made quite a few tubes with it so far. I just haven't, uh, haven't filmed with it yet. Next up is another custom mold. I call this one the Florida Frog. I had this one done years ago by a, by a mold company out of Texas called Lakeside Baits. And uh, he was super awesome to work with and absolutely nailed our frog design. And you can see the company initials there in the tail. So super, super great frog. I absolutely love this frog. It's near and dear to my heart. This was my first custom mold and my first like major investment back when I first started running baits. And um, this will always be my favorite frog as such absolutely love it the performance is is excellent and uh, it's just a beautiful frog my brother-in-law helped me design it and uh and did all the drawing and, and sketches i still have the nap napkin sketches uh on my wall actually um so super cool stuff there back to some more bass tackle molds um, we've seen these recently in a very recent video these are my 709 crawls which again bob's tackle shack was nice enough to initial for me <laughs> so Thank you so much, sir, to, for that. Um, so I have uh, eight cavities of this. Sorry, no, I have 10 cavities of this. No, one, two, three, four, yep, 10 cavities. So I have five two cavity, and I really like the low cavity molds because let's say you're getting low on plastic. Well, I can actually use my plastic more efficiently. Instead of having to fill a high cavity mold, let's say I only have a little bit left in my cup, I can use almost every drop because, hey, I only have to fill two cavities. I'm not going to get half of a four cavity mold filled. I'm going to be able to fill up all my cavities there. And last but not least, let's look at some uh, aluminum hand pouring. So uh, over here, we'll look at the old Bob's Tackle Shack um, BTS molds there. So, uh, yeah, apparently there's a lot of birds chirping around me. So 
absolute excellent mold. It, it was it was like the OG of this sort of uh, this sort of style of mold. When I when I bought these molds, I didn't have the hook slot inserts, so I had those fashioned and uh, worked super well. I still pour this mold quite a bit, despite having um, the one that I developed helped develop with uh, Angling AI, but. Uh, Absolute killer mold there was lucky enough to find these used on the second-hand market and Bought four of them, which was as many as I could buy <laughs> um, And then uh, and then here's the one that uh, that that you've seen a lot on here Hopefully if you watch my channel, thank you. So uh, this is the one that uh, Josh and I kind of collaborated on and uh, worked really hard on the on the development design and, and some of the ideas and features behind it so, uh, yep, that's ours right there. Both are six inches. So the one that we just looked at was six inch. This one is six inch. And I have six cavities of those. And then the, uh, the little four inch version of the same mold here. This one just was released and it is super awesome. So there it is right there. And uh, just could not be happier with, with how these molds turned out. We, uh, we worked very hard on them, especially Josh. You know, he did the hard part. I just kind of uh, provided some inspiration and, and a few uh, tips from a pouring standpoint, and uh, I think we hit the nail on the head. And folks, sorry about this. Last but not least, I forgot to show you my big, uh, my big ribbon tail injection worms. So these are bass tackle molds right here. So this is sold as a seven inch ribbon tail, but it hangs nine inches. And uh, this is one of those molds, like 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 some of my other ones, that it just it just fills perfectly every time. You almost can't mess it up. Um, you know, the only downside being it's a large mold with 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 a large cavity, so you have to have a lot of plastic, or else sometimes you won't get it all the way full. And we all know how annoying that is. And then here's the five inch version of it, which I actually I sell it as a seven inch because that's what it actually looks like and hangs to, to seven inches. Okay, so here are some silicone mold options and you can see 90% of it is swim bait related um, and most of it is from Stank X baits. So over here you have the huge eight inch ribbed swim bait there, okay? This is an absolute awesome bait um, and it's absolutely massive. I mean, there, there it is next to my hand. It's absolutely huge. 8 inch ribbed. This is a very popular one. This is the 7 inch Bape, okay, from Stank X Baits. Probably the highest quality silicone molds, in my opinion. Um, so, three of the big eights, um, two of the uh, 7 inch Bapes, and then one of my favorites here, the Rocket Mold. This is also a 7 inch Stank X Bait uh, mold right there, a Rocket Mold. Absolute killer bait that you get out of that three of those um, now these are these were actually custom made for me by Brad Hardy but they're also available through Stank X um, so this is a custom made five cavity version of the four inch ribbed bait right there um, this was also one that Brad Hardy made me I let it split in half like an idiot but this is probably the most difficult mold that I have to pour because it's so tiny. It's a little three inch long pin nose swim bait. And um, I mean, this is like white bass food size. I mean, there's, there's my finger. This is also uh, available through Stank X. However, this was custom made by Brad. Um, this is basically the four inch step tail version of the bait. Um, excellent mold there. This is another Brad Hardy masterpiece right here. This is a resin mold that he actually poured in one of my favorite colors that he makes. So he not only poured this mold um, with all these different shapes here, some darter, darters and gobies, but he poured it um, in, in a color. So <laughs> there you go. This is a custom worm that Brad Hardy made me again. We call it the one worm because this, it's the only worm you ever need. Just one, it's that good. Uh, let's see, and then I have some fun collaboration novelties here from uh, Nate Marling over at Marling Baits. So you probably remember the Poison Dart Frog. Okay. Excellent mold there. Happy to still have that. And then the Octopi, the Octopus. And what a challenge that is to pour and use. Um, I got a really nice bite on it whenever I used it, but I ruined it. So, uh, yeah. 
that's currently my silicone mold collection. I have, well, I do have some of the custom stuff that I made, but I don't really regularly use it. But uh, this is all the stuff that I regularly use. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be showing you this contraption right here. This is the Stink X Baits Divider Cup, and it's for hand pouring really neat patterns and swirls and blends. So I'm gonna show you a color that I uh, made last week after looking at Hubble Space uh, Telescope pictures. And uh, this one looks very galactic. It's almost alien in a way. So black base on that side, just a little bit of hyper shift. Okay, just to kind of give, give it some effect there. Not a lot, okay. Well, it's not focusing, but anyway. Not a lot of hyper shift. And then the other side is violet highlight, okay. So highlight powders are insane. Yeah, you can see a nice, nice pink color there. And we need a lot of it. I want to make it very thick. Okay. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and mix these up. And uh, you know, I, I want both sides really thick because I want a lot of contrast so that you can see the swirls. If if your colors are uh, are too uh, translucent, you really won't get the effect that you want, in my opinion. Okay, and last but not least for the black side, um, so from the same website where, where you can get the Hypershift, they also sell microflakes. This is .004 um, size, and this is a little hologram flake. So in my mind, these are like the stars, right, in space? <laughs> That's... That's how I saw it in my head. So very, very fine powder there. Let's see if we can get, get it to uh, focus in. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, check that out. Super cool. Yeah. You can see the hyper shift now and the uh, stars. So basically we're gonna be swirling these two colors together using the divider cup and it will kind of look like that in a way. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. I'm gonna heat these up very hot, then we're gonna transfer them to the divider cup and then we're gonna pour the worm. Okay, here we go. So I have the divider cup full and just very carefully, I'm just going to get them started here, okay? And I'm just gonna kind of vibrate my wrist and that will swirl them really cool in my opinion. Okay, oops, sorry, I'm trying to look at the camera and what I'm doing. And what's cool is that you can kind of tilt the cup based on how you want. So if I want more black, I'll tilt it that way. The black will come out first. If I want more of the other color, I'll tilt it that way. So you can kind of um, control how much of each side you get if you don't want just even amounts. So, you know, I can pour the head black and then tilt it the other way and then start getting more of the other color. Or I can do it opposite. You know, I like to I like to do them about half and half mostly, but I really like to kind of shake the cup. As you can see, my wrist there, I'm just shaking the cup as I go up and down. This is an injection mold. This is Angling AI five inch bloodline mold. All right. Keys to get the plastic very hot so that it fills the mold. Okay. And we'll see if we can get any of these to really come out right. Kind of interesting. Interesting, uh, interesting thought. All right, there we go. Okay, and there are the blood lines. That was hand poured into an injection mold. So, pretty cool. You know, and it takes a certain type of mold to do that with. But look at the pattern that you can get. So, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a, a full video on um, hand, hand pouring injection molds. Because certain injection molds you can do. 
and uh and look at that effect i could never get that with injection ever so just uh two different ways about it so you saw it here first hand pouring injection uh molds so uh be on the lookout for a video on that and uh yeah i think we'll have some fun okay and there it is look how like otherworldly alien galactic the effects are no two are the same and it's just every worm is a unique thing here um you know even those uh bloodlines that we poured with this no two were alike and um i just think that's super special i mean look at the pattern on this worm here that is super cool and um you know uh, again there's so much you can do with hand pouring you can do the precision you know swim bait stuff that we've been doing or you can do something like this where it's a box of chocolates you never know what you're gonna get okay and so as promised uh just a little brief shop tour um everything's not 100 percent cleaned up but over here on the right side we have where i keep pyrex cups you'll see some old remelt back there my uh, paper towels of course you know i store gloves knives you know spoons things like that music box very important on top of the microwave uh let's see down here i have my product bags from china so oops those right there as well as my bubble mailers for um, uh, sending out orders obviously we have the work table here you know my fans that exhaust out in the garage you know, a little shop light there some decoration and stuff stickers then right behind here we have um, sort of a utility table so my vacuum chamber is right here this this way the exhaust from the pump will be drawn into this fan and then pumped out. Um, so setting that there is sort of strategic for ventilation. Um, let's see, things that I have made that are like curing, before packaging, chill over here. I have all of my eyeballs um, here in these Tupperwares, you know, by size, things like that. There's my logo eyes. You know, my color shifts are in here. Um, so just various things there. Below that is my plastic. So I have my three main blends. I have some floating blend in the back. Uh, and then I have, you can see some lure work stuff over there. That's my salt and uh, heat stabilizer and things like that if I need to use those things. Um, over here, these are like my big shelves. So I have my cooking pots up there, some extra goodies up here. This is an old bear's bait mold actually right there. Um, I forgot, yeah, I should have uh, should have put that one in the video earlier. Um, so here's the majority of my pigments and colors. I keep my um, injectors up here. Um, these are all powders and flakes, of course. You can see some of my more bulk flakes. All the molds that we looked at today um, down there. Landon's little first rod that he hasn't used yet is down there. Uh, I like to keep my fishing poles over here simply because it's a corner and I don't have a better idea. This is my real messy utility table so once baits are packaged um, that i'm gonna sell i uh, put them in the bubble mailers and i try to wait till i have quite a few of them before sending them out uh let's see i keep my dead on pigments in this tupperware here um, some odds and ends some powders and mylar flakes and uh, some tubing and just little Little neat stuff that uh, that I only break out every now and then. Some absolutely ginormous stuff there. Um, and uh, I also keep my paints over here. And then just various, various things that I have made that I haven't used yet or offered for sale. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. You know, there, there's really no shop tour. It's just looking at this wall, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Everything you've ever seen me do happened right here just yeah i mean there there's nothing to it so you can do a lot in in a little bit of space um you know you don't have to uh take up the whole house so anyway hope you guys enjoyed today's video all right i'm signing this one off thank you guys so much for watching please shoot me lots of comments down below and uh again we'll see you next time